also author of Bigots with Badges, and Dominic Izzo, former police officer out in Illinois and author of the book, Before the Badge, Everything You Need to Know Before Becoming a Cop. Now, Matthew, over to you first. You had a long career with the Marshal Service. Do you see a direct correlation between the rise of crime and local laws or politics across the country? Well, you know, I've worked with New York City a lot on dragnet operations and so forth. But I can tell you right, and I got to know Eric Adams, but I can tell you right now, one of the biggest reasons why we see this upswing in crime is because there was a police slowdown, a blue wall of silence. They decided to slow down because they felt like they were being thrown under the bus. So you had that, and the word went out on the street, kill who you want, go out to who you want, and, and police are not going to really investigate it. So Eric has stepped into a powder keg. He stepped right in the middle of that, as well as all of the guns that are already out there on the streets in New York City that's been out there. Uh, this is not a political issue, but this is a human rights issue, and it's an issue that says until we buy those guns back and try to dump money into those communities, get those people jobs, and change the paradigm, we're going to continue to have this type of balance. I mean, people are just going to go willy-nilly because people are going to survive, and they're going to do whatever it takes to survive. And you take people and put them in one particular area and say, hey, we're not giving you jobs or nothing. We allow you to have drugs. Do your thing. That's what this end result is what you're going to get. Dominic, what do you think? I mean, you were on the ground. You were pounding the pavement for a lot of years. Are New York City crime rates directly tied to left-leaning policies and even local district attorneys? It's the same out here in Chicago. I, so I'm very curious to see what this uh, is going to happen with the new mayor, who's a former law enforcement, but he's a Democrat. And it's not a uh, it's not a monarchy, right? It's not a it's not an empire. He doesn't have the final say. He's the mayor, but he's going to have checks and balances to keep him uh, from being a tyrant. So I want to really see what when he comes in office and he tries to do things you know, the right way. You know, how much resistance is he going to get? Because it is the system. It's the district attorney or state's attorney, depending upon where you're at. It's the deals that they make with the defense attorney. It's the programs, government programs that people want to put in uh, to say that it's going to cause re rehabilitation for the neighborhood. It's definitely, I, I agree with a lot what Matthew says. It's, you know, it's not the gun issue in the way of constantly vilifying guns. I mean, we tried something like that with prohibition, with vilifying alcohol. We saw how that went. We're not going to wind up getting this gun issue ever solved unless we actually go after the, the morale of people or the morals of people, education, uh, proper criminal uh, accountability, which just isn't happening. It, the recidivism rate is insane. They're arrested. They're released. They're pumped back out on the street. That's why you get your blue wall silence. Why should a cop do a damn thing if the, if the uh, judges and politici or po judges, politicians and uh, state attorneys aren't doing anything? Yeah, uh, you're, we're hearing an awful lot about the uh, no cash bail issue uh, being brought up as well. Dominic, I'm going to give you the first crack at this question here. Now, back in the early 2000s, when Rudy Giuliani was mayor of New York City and Bernie Carrick was the NYPD commissioner, they implemented, as we remember, the so-called broken windows policing policy. Uh, stop and frisk was a hot topic for the years to follow. Did that ultimately help or hurt the city? You know what? There's only one way to really kind of say it is when you got dad or mom at home. And we'll say dad. And dad is the disciplinary. And mom says, wait till your father gets home. Well, we know that the kids are probably not going to misbehave half as much uh, when it comes down to having that threat of discipline from dad coming in. If your police force lawfully, justifiably, and to the Constitution is allowed to do their jobs, you're going to have a criminal element that actually is deterred from, cr from uh, criminal activity. Um, the broken window theory, I got arguments with it. Stop and frisk. I think it's a great deterrent when it comes down to high violent crime areas. I know other, other people like to use it for the uh, the argument of it's a racial issue. But you know what? Cops just are not allowed to do their jobs. And more and more as time goes on, we're seeing that they're just vilified and criminals are just going to be able to run in the muck and do whatever they want. Matthew, what's your take? Uh, broken windows, stop and frisk. Do you think that's something that needs to come back to New York City? Well, I... I I, I worked on dragon operations when, when that was in place and up in New York City. Again, what we did, we just filled the prisons up. We, we, the prisons were busting over with people, mainly black folks. And what happened is, as, as Dominique said, we were taking the dads out of the home. The problem was we were just locking up people on small time stuff. I think had we gone after the real, the heavy hitters, these people that are killing folks, the gun owners, we would have done a lot better. We wind up filling the prisons up with just people who were just using and selling drugs. So if they change that sort of scenario and go after the heavy hitters, 
I think you'll start to see a difference as well as dump money into those communities to try to buy those guns back, buy as many of them back as possible, and to get those people jobs. And you get them jobs and get them something where they can focus their attention on other things. I think we're between those things, I think we'll see crime begin to fall again. Um, Matthew, given, given your years of law enforcement experience, do you think things have to get worse before they get better? Is that the only way out? Well, that's what will happen. I mean, the bottom line is we're seeing it right now. Things are getting worse because, once again, like I said, once the word went out was on the streets, hey, you know, police upset. They're not going to do anything, so kill who you want. Yes, it will get worse. Until they focus in on those guns and the people that are actually squeezing the trigger, go after those folks and, and let those people go that are selling or using drugs in prisons and go after the people that are actually squeezing the trigger Buy those guns back, I think, and find jobs, and I think you'll begin to see a difference. Yeah, Dominic, I saw you nodding along when Matthew was talking about going after the, the big guys, the guys at the root of the problem. Who's at the root of the problem of all of this crime happening in New York City? Politicians. It's it's meant to be cyclical. So I do I agree with a lot of what Matthew has to says, but it has to say. But honestly, I think if we look at things like going back to the Constitution, if we actually focus more on the sheriffs in every county, if we look at not legalizing but decriminalizing the drug war, uh, you're going to see a lot of issues. Right. I don't agree that it's a gun problem. I agree it's why people are shooting each other for the gun issues in the first place. We're not attacking those issues, and that's the biggest problem out there. And it's perpetuating this violence that politicians just step more in and say, "All right, let's do some more programs." Let's create some more laws. Let's do this. Politicians are loving this. It's keeping them in office. Right. It's keeping them going forward over and over <laughs> and over again. Elect me, I'll change this. This is the never-ending well of just opportunity for politicians. They're the evil ones. They're the ones that are causing this problem just from the beginning to the end. So it sounds like both of and you— it's not Republican go, go or Democrat. Go ahead, it's, and it's not Republican or Democrat. I always tell people that. If you look at history, when I worked this program, and I was going back decades working in New York— if we have we have Republicans and we have Democrats. I tell people, let's keep it. I do agree with Dominique when he says po political. Yes, it's, and we need to take it away from the politi policies of po politics and make certain that if you give people jobs and you ratchet down on this whole drug war thing, you will begin to take away the supply and the demand. Yeah, it sounds like both of you do agree that it's more like letting the cops be the cops and the politicians focusing more on the community rather than trying to bear down on law enforcement to clean all of this up. Because it looks like crime is spiking all across this country. And, and as both of you said, it is going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Fogg and Dominic Izzo, appreciate your years of experience and insight here with us. Thank you.